so here we go we're gonna wrap up case number five get some good progress in it let's Hilly. do it Shane February 24th till 14 p.m. The court will now reconvene for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. Emma didn't come back. Allow me to call the next witness to the stand. The officer in charge of guarding the evidence room on the day of the crime. And there he is. The potential criminal. Witness, please state your name and occupation. Me partner, or I'm just a man, same as you, wandering the trails of civilization. Occasionally helping the elderly cross intersections when needed. Yes, we get it. Oh, I know. You're a patrol man. As for my name, if you listen hard enough, you can hear the howling wind calling it out. To be exact, it's, Saint, it's Jake Marshall, your honor. Howling wind? I've never heard Edgeworth described that way before. Now, Mr. Marshall, let me ask you something. You were in charge of guarding the evidence room on the day the crime took place. Is this correct? According to the papers, partner. What do you mean? A desperado soul was as boundless as the desert sands. No paper can sum it up. Maybe it's best we get on with this quickly. Please share with us your testimony of the day of the crime. In plain old English. Old English. My job was to keep a wary eye on that bone orchard. Orchard. They said I was supposed to make rounds three times a day, but that ain't my style. Besides, the room's protected by two security systems anyways. If I remember right, that was that street side saloon at the time I went down. Just an innocent traveling man, so if you're out of ammo, it's time I hit the trail. That's not playing no English at all. <laughs> I can't say I particularly care for your attitude. I can't say I care for your beard, but you don't see me complaining. He's constantly shaven. He hates his beard. Wait a minute. What do you mean by two security systems? I mean the security's cameras and the ID card reader. I reckon even a cow pole like new knows about those. Yes, well, what about the fingerprint activated locks on the evidence locker? Fingerprint activated locks? What kind of newfangled doohickeys are those? It's not being very helpful. It's not that good with machines or following orders. Everyone's got their weaknesses now, don't they, Mr. Prosecutor? This one seems like trouble. Alright, Mr. Wright, he's all yours. Day of the crime. So, my job was to keep a weird eye on that bone record. Okay. This guy's supposed to make rounds three times a day. Why that isn't time. that your style? <laughs> But well, you made your rounds on the day of the crime, right? Ain't you heard a word I said, partner? I told you that ain't my style. Hmm. I'm afraid I don't understand. No desperado I know lets rules get in his way. No desperado I don't join the police force. So, Officer Marshall, on the day of the crime? Just between you and me, I didn't set foot in the evidence room that day. But he... Right? I mean, wasn't his he fingerprint did. on the locker? On yeah, exiting? His, yeah. His fingerprints was on the locker. There was a rubber glove stuck to the victim's locker. You know anything about that? Sorry, partner. Can't say I do. I haven't been in that crypt in weeks. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, this guy avoid being fired. Besides, what does the security thing show? The fingerprint reader with all the names? Is it still missing? It's still missing one, if I'm correct. Yep. 
and 777 would be a very cowboy easy name <laughs> at 420. <laughs> yes, there's still somebody at 420 with a very cowboy S I D number. Okay, room protected by two security systems anyways. Street side saloon, the time went down. Why is he at the street side saloon? What were you doing in a place like that? I was eating spaghetti. <laughs> Not even angel steak lunches can beat that parlor's vognor sepia pasta. Do you mean to tell us? You abandoned your police duties to eat some noodles? Not all desperados eat tacos, partner. That's not what I meant. I hope this at least taught you a lesson. That's strange. This is usually what Edgeworth says. Did you not want to raise this year? <laughs> the innocent trial and many are almost time to the trail. Supposed to make rounds three times a day. Rooms protected by two security systems. And then you. Phoenix already brought up the fingerprint skinner. Yep. Isn't, uh. I've, isn't the one we need to pretend pretty much the fingerprint, right? Should show that he was there. Yeah, but. I guess that would be the ammo. Oh wait, what? isn't that, it, it, that's not a specific piece of evidence, isn't it? Or is it on, oh, right there. Right here. Are we ready? Hold it, do it. Objection. Officer Marshall, doesn't it strike you as odd? That is, you being called in to testify like this? Hmm. After all, you weren't in the security room at the time of the crime. And yet you dragged me down here. Explain yourself, partner. It's quite simple. You left a very large trail behind at the scene. Or to be exact, a handprint. Huh. Listen real good, partner. Like I said, I'm the caretaker of that crypt. I pay my respects, that is, make my rounds about once a month. It's only natural my fingerprints will be in there. Ooh. I only wish it were, officer. But you see, your fingerprints were covered in blood. It's an evidence room. Of course there's going to be blood everywhere. <laughs> Witness, what's the meaning of this? Your bloodstained fingerprints were at the crime scene? The blood was wiped away. However, a luminal test clearly revealed this. Well, Officer Marshall? Seems to me... There ain't a person in this room with a head on his shoulders. I take it you have an explanation then, Officer Marshall. I cut myself shaving. About the bloodstained fingerprints, huh? Very well, you may begin your testimony about your fingerprints. Found at the scene of the crime. Like I said, it's only natural for my fingerprints to be in that evidence room. One of them just happened to be at the same place as the bloodstained handprint. It was not uh, anywhere near close at all. <laughs> well... The murderer touched the locker where my fingerprint was by chance. That how does he know it was a locker, even though the picture shows it's on a locker? <laughs> the bloodstained and the fingerprint are completely unrelated. Or did you know the murderer was wearing gloves? See, I don't do fit. Hmm. Oh, his explanation appears valid. Although there's room for doubt. Life wouldn't be fun for any doubt, partner. The defense may now cross examine the witness. This guy's hiding something. I can feel it. Now's my chance to prove it. Alright, what do we do? Like I said, it's only natural for my fingerprints to be in that evidence room. Makes sense when you're in there once a month, he probably touches everything. Uh-huh. 
one of them just happened to be at the same place as the bloodstained handprint. It was very uh, far away from the bloodstained handprint. <laughs> Opposite side of the room, well, I would even say. But yes. Isn't that what he's talking about? He's talking about the bloodstained handprint? Oh, he's saying, he's saying, uh, this one just happened to be where his hand was? Yeah. Hmm. A likely story. But it doesn't say... How does he know it's... I guess it doesn't say where it was. And he already said... How, do you, how does he know it's already on a locker? Should we press then? That sounds like a uh, pressing matter. But does he bring up the locker in his previous one or next statement? So natural from our fingerprints in the evidence room. That one of them happens to be in the same place as the bloodstained handprint. Murder touched the locker uh, where my fingerprint was by chance. Let's I would the maybe press the unrelated. locker. This one? Maybe, yeah, give it a press. The chances of that happening are million to one. On the contrary, one could argue that's just the opposite. The chances of that not happening are a million to one. Get one thing straight, partner. You ain't gonna get no reward for me for mere fingerprint. You wanna know why? Lost any fingerprints are completely mm -hmm. unrelated. So we need to f f make it so that they are related. I guess, but when. He had to have touched the blood anyway. When the blood, new blood, wipe away his fingerprints. The new blood wipe away his fingerprints. Like if he touched that and someone with a, uh, another bloodied fingerprint touched it, wouldn't it not have mattered? Hmm. Because his fresh prints are made in the blood, but it's still his handprint. Okay, so we have to connect. Alright, let's press this one. That's because you, how did you put it? Pay your specs once a month? Yeah, that's right. That and one more thing. That locker happened to be mine. What? What do you mean? I meant what I said. That's the lock I used when I was a detective. The lock I still use. All that's in there now, though, is a heap of broken dreams. Didn't something fall out of it? Or did not fall out of it, but disappear? Like, on the evidence when the panned over to it? Uh, something and something was put in it. In the video. Oh, it, 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 so it was the opposite. Yes. It started out empty and then something was in it. It'd be strange if my prints weren't all over that locker. Apparently, his fingerprints data was never removed from the locker's programming. He must have been using the fingerprint lock all the time if I ever known it. Ooh, updated. Oh, not wrong. The print had been wiped. Oh, and it's happened to be at the same place at the Blustang hand print. That was the one in a million? No, this one was the one in a million. Oh. We haven't pushed for this one. Oh, then do it. So then, what about the bloody handprint? Wasn't mine. It's no mystery. What we just said it was. Please explain. My locker's covered with my fingerprints. It just so happened. Oh. Murder touched the locker on my fingerprints by chance. The blood stain and the fingerprint are completely unrelated. I think what we need to present is the video. This one. Because at the very end, you know, uh, his thing appeared, uh, a cloth appeared in his locker at the very end. 
Yeah. Which wouldn't happen if it wa if this mysterious person wasn't him, because only he can get into his locker. So we can try presenting try. it. Give it a try. I'm just worried that I'm thinking too far ahead. Like You're oh. probably thinking too far ahead, but give it a try. Oh, always music thinking didn't stop. too far ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. I guess break down the steps. Hmm. I mean, he said he wasn't in there. Could he present like his the fingerprint? ID. Like he he needed his. The, Phoenix even brought up that he needed. He's been using the ID scanner without knowing it for getting into the room. No, wait, no, you just need your ID card. Okay, so what we can do is we can we can present the ID card record and ask him for his ID, right? To see if it matches up with the the seven sevens. Yeah. Is, do you think that we should try Unless that? Unless he took it, yeah. But yeah, might as well see what we can... Ugh. Oh, no. What did the thing about the statement? Okay. Perhaps it's uh, the regular ID instead? Blood the blood stain thing and, the and the fingerprint are unrelated. I think we have to tackle that issue. That was on the dead guy's shoe. Hmm. So, the blood stain and the fingerprints are completely unrelated. Now, let's press for this. Maybe we can get something a little bit more. Unrelated? There's difference night and day. Kind of like cereal and cereal. <laughs> One's got to do with breakfast, while the other's a type of murder. Breakfast kills. He's right. Although, see me alike, they're totally different. I'll see what homonyms have to do with this. But didn't you know the murderer was wearing gloves? That's a new one. I think he says that at the very end, but maybe press that too, just to... How do you know that? I may be a loner, but I still do my job. I keep up on the reports. There was a blood stain in the scene, thought to be left by the murderer. That's right. It was found in Detective Gumshoe's locker. However, no fingerprints were detected on that handprint. Oh yeah, I think we tried that too. Hmm. So that would mean the murderer wearing gloves happened to place their hand on top of Officer Marshall's fingerprints. That's the only logical conclusion. Are you starting to get the picture part now? The picture? The seal of blood in the desert is just food for the buzzards. There is only one reality, and that's this. The security tape. So long as my trial isn't in there, my trail isn't in there, you can't say otherwise. Yeehaw. Yeehaw! This ain't gas anywhere, Mr. Wright. 
Please consider carefully where you're going with this cross-examination. Ah, uh, yeah, Your Honor. Now then, continue your testimony, Officer Marshall. Too bad it wasn't me in the video, right, partner? Too is bad this, it wasn't is, me? That's... Is, this, is this finally where I can use the video? I think so. This is very heavily uh, try implying that he's... pressing first, though. Uh, I think this is... Hmm. Uh, this sounds like it's the uh, smoking gun. I know, but uh, you gotta think of this game's logic. You'd probably have to go through and uh, press it first, and then it's like, Oh, do you have evidence then? Alright, let's see. What do you mean by that, huh? You want to time this crime, isn't that right, partner? If so, this video is the only direct evidence you have. But that video is next to useless. It's full of blind spots. Blind spots? Places you can't see. The camera's panning back and forth. The floor isn't shown. It's almost familiar with the camera's position. They could leave the room without being caught on tape. We don't have time for your speculations, Mr. Wright. Well, Mr. Wright, if you can show us evidence in the view that indicates Officer Marshall was present, please do so now. Very well. Allow me to point out your mistake, Officer Marshall. I think hanging out of the locker, right? Red, carefully, Mr. Wright. Well, you might wind up being the one making the mistake. Yes, I'm doing the cloth. Now then, let's have another look at the video. Show us this incriminating evidence of the witness, Officer Jake Marshall. How many times must we watch this, Shane? It is our hell. Just don't go too fast. Maybe I could just rewind it and we'll go start from the end instead. But I like torture. Alright. Slow down! Pause it! Enhance! Enhance! Hey there! Bringing our attention back to the security camera is a mistake I'm afraid you'll soon not forget, Officer Marshall. The days are short in Texas, and so are our tempers. Could you sum up what you have to say in eight words or less? Very well. You. You can clearly be seen in this video! Eight words! <laughs> <laughs> exactly eight words. Not bad, partner. The key lies in a certain locker shown in the video. Thanks for playing it again. That locker with the white cloth sticking out. That was the witnesses, I believe. Now then, let's rewind the video a bit. Please, no. Look at that loser lying on the ground. Oh, the white cloth, it's a gun! What's the meaning of this, Officer Marshall? When the crime took place, the white cloth wasn't there. Then, it suddenly appeared. There's only one explanation. Officer Marshall, you were in the evidence room at the time of the crime. What's more, you opened your locker when the camera was turned away. Order, order! It would seem that's the only- Hold your horses! Sorry, partner, but you got the wrong man. But that's your locker? So what if my locker was open? That doesn't mean I'm the one who opened it. Basically impossible. The murderer needed to hide something, so he's opened a locker and stuck it in. It's not my fault you happen to choose mine. Your lack of technology knowledge is hurting you now, Marshall. Why is everyone staring at me like I'm a wanted man? Because you are. This guy isn't just plain dumb. He is dumb. He really doesn't know. Um, I hate to rain on your parade. 
But you're the only person who can open that particular locker. Oh yeah? I call your bluff. All in. All in. You say I opened that locker. Now prove it. With, picture of this locker. With the picture of this locker. <laughs> Take that. Take that. Uh, fingerprint sensor? We talked about this earlier today. This locker can only be opened by the detectives they belong to. What, what course, cra kind of crazy talk is this? Well, Detective Gumshoe did mention something about this. In any case, the locks aren't that obvious. There are even some people on the force that don't know about the fingerprint locks. So, Sheriff, what do you have to say? In eight words or less? <laughs> Damn. Really get him back, huh? I only got one word for you, partner. No! <sighs> got him. Order, order, order. Witness, explain yourself. If this is a joke, it's the worst I've ever heard. I assure you, there's no joke, Officer Marshall. Now then, please tell us what you were doing in the evidence room at the time of the crime. Ugh. Ole! <laughs> please answer the question. <laughs> what is he now, a bullfighter? That's alright, Officer Marshall. I believe we can figure the rest out from here. We can? Have a look at these floor plans. There is no place for someone to hide in the evidence room. Yet, Officer Meekins didn't see Officer Marshall. If that's so, then where was the witness? It seems Mr. Wright has an answer. That's right. The only possible conclusion. Well then, let's hear it. Where was Officer Marshall at the time of the crime? Uh. Hmm. Wouldn't he have to have been behind him? Who, Meekins? He, would, he showed up after Meekins, didn't he? No, he showed or, up. Or no, he was first. Meekin snuck in at him. Yes, Meekin snuck in after him. Oh, right. So, so V? Huh? Because V would be him, right? Because he would already have been. Yeah, the victim. Because V mm -hmm. would have been where Marshall would have been. Right? Right. Uh, uh oh! Officer oh, Marshall, standing oh. right there. There, but that's that's what the victim, Detective Goodman, was. Correct. Unless the man wasn't Detective Goodman. I believe the victim in the video is Officer Marshall. It was you, dressed up like Detective Goodman. But that's preposterous. Officer Meekins witnessed the detective at the crime scene. Once he saw the man's face, he know for sure. May I point out though that Officer Meekins did not know Detective Goodman. He also testified about the man's reaction when confronted. When I entered the evidence room, I asked him to show his car, sir. Yes, and how did Detective Goodman respond? He signed pulled a knife on me. Something about the officer's story puzzled me. If the man had his ID card, why didn't he just show it? Yes, he would have needed to enter the evidence room, so he must have been carrying it. The answer is simple. He couldn't show it. As you can see, Detective Goodman's picture is on his ID card. Oh, I get it. If he showed that, his cover would have been blown. Officer Meekins would have realized the man wasn't Detective Goodman. Do you have something to say to this, Officer Marshall? Marshall? Uh, you got quite the imagination, partner. We got a term for that. It's called circumstantial evidence. Circumstantial evidence? 
He's still denying it. You're gonna have to do better than that to break a detective. Unless you have hard evidence proving I dressed up as the victim. Hmm. I can't say I particularly care for your uncooperative dis disposition. I can't say I care for your beer, but you don't see me complaining. You just said that. <laughs> well, Mr. Wright, do you have any evidence proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that Officer Marshall dressed up as the victim? Do we? I think it's well, somewhere in the video. Who am I kidding? I'm not making anything like that. I can see the fear in your eyes, partner. Seems you're the one who couldn't take the desert heat. Hack. This can't be happening. Video time. So obvious the one. What can I do? I don't think the video has anything. Hmm. It looks like your lack of experience has finally been exposed. Hmm. I'll pass on to you what someone told me when I was just starting out. When you run into a wall with no place to go, return to the basics. The basics? CQC. For me, that would be what Mia used to tell me. Phoenix, try thinking outside of the box. I shouldn't look for proof that Officer Marshall was in disguise. But rather, I should look for evidence that came about because he was in disguise. Hmm. Why do you think this locker was open in the first place? What do you mean? There's no reason for Officer Marshall to open his locker at the time of the crime. Yeah, he did. Despite the chance, it might be discovered later as it has been. Which means he didn't originally plan to open his locker. Does that mean that he was trying to hide something? Either trying to hide something or... Got that scuffle with, uh, Meekins. And it forced him to have to open his locker for some reason. Yeah. According to the defense's statement argument, Officer Jake Marshall dressed up as Detective Goodman at the time of the crime. Then after the crime was committed, he opened his own locker for some unknown reason. The fact that a white cloth is sticking out of the locker seems to indicate that he opened it in order to put the cloth inside. So, just what exactly is this piece of cloth? Perhaps, perhaps the video is the key to all of our unanswered questions. Don't have any evidence, so this video is my only shot. This is new tech, Nang. They have to show off the 3D video as often as they can. Very well. Let's take yet another look at the security tape for the thousandth time, everybody. We'll even play at 0.25 speed this time, just to really get it in. After committing the crime, the witness pulled the locker, opened the locker to put away the white cloth. Please show us why the witness had to open his locker. Why does he? Why did he have to open his locker? Uh, okay. Alright, we'll see him when he walks by. Looks clean as a whistle. Do you think Opens it was to put lock. away this glove? Mm, the glove, no. Because that's our, that, it's a rubber glove. Okay. And it's evidence. Okay. Oh, and we and found that. Yeah, we found that scene of the crime anyway. Okay, so it's not. He didn't put the glove away, so he had to put something away for some reason. But why? Cuts him with a knife. Do you oh. think it was because blood. of the knife? What'd you say? He suddenly had blood on his shoulder. Hold up, I got Rewind. It. Rewind. Okay, play. Rewind. Because he cut him, and then he, me seeks him with some blood on him. Okay. Oh, do you think what he put away was the jacket then? Because it had blood on... Uh, it, it, I think he tried wiping off some of the blood. 
That's a lot of blood on the jacket to be wiping off, though, but I get what you're saying. I, but that would be a reason why you would have to put a white cloth in there, unless... Is the white cloth the jacket itself? Like, just the whole jacket that you was trying to shove no, in? No, because... The... I... Because we're looking for a reason why he would he would have to have put the jacket away, right? Like, I'm thinking it's the jacket because you can't just leave this room with the jacket looking like that. You yeah. Know, it'll make you super suspicious. So I think in a in a, a white moment, coat in a, a moment, white cloth. yeah, yeah, white cloth with blood. I think in a moment of desperation, he had to shove the jacket away for to hide the evidence. So, point at the jacket or the blood. Keep looking. This could also explain why he didn't appear in the video on his way out to avoid his identity being uh, seen. You know, he crawled past him. Yeah, he crawled past the camera, put his jacket away, and then left before the camera could catch him because he didn't want the camera to see who he was. And I think this cloth is his it's jacket. Is the jacket? All right. Yeah. So uh, don't point that out. We already pointed that. I think you have to point the blood that falls out he comes out tax him with the knife he yeah Meekins would have gotten his blood on him from his hand oh yeah that too but we mark we we do the uh, the blood shoulder right yeah. Take that. Take that. For some reason, you disguise yourself as Detective Goodman and enter the evidence room. Though I don't know what to do. Don't know to what end yet. Yet. However, something unexpected happened. Officer Meekin barged in on you. When asked to show your ID card, you pulled a knife on him. However. Officer Meekins panicked. And the white coat you were wearing was sore with blood. A bloody white coat. You couldn't just walk out like that. So you hid the coat in your locker. Not bad, partner. Now then, Officer Marshall. Are you ready to tell us the truth? Looks like I underestimated y'all. I hope you're happy now, Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago, if you were only half as persistent then as you are today, we all wouldn't have to be here now, where would we? Officer Marshall, tell the court what you did. All of it. Alright. It seems the time has come. Ooh, here we go. Press everything. I had to do it that day. I just couldn't stand by and let it die. I stole a detective's ID and dressed like him. I planned to take out the evidence. I wasn't expecting Officer Meekins. I knocked him out. I managed to escape. I knew which errors wouldn't be caught on the camera. There wasn't any murder in the evidence room that 515. So the supposed victim was really you. But there's a one thing I still don't understand. Traces of a large quantity of blood was found on the floor of the evidence room. If no one was murdered, then how come? How could that be? Officer Meekins managed to cut his own hand. My guess is he's the donor. It was way too much blood for such a small donation. Okay. Hand wounds bleed a lot. I had to do it that day. I couldn't just stand by and let it die. Well, immediate press, right? Yep. When you say it, you mean... Do you even have to ask, partner? The SO9 incident. Two years have passed since the case was closed. It was going to completely end with the transferal that day. Not if I have anything to do with it. The incident's not over. But what did you hope to accomplish by sneaking into the evidence room? When a case is closed, only that case's lead detective can look through the evidence. 
I want to have a look at it myself one more time. No matter what the cost. I don't care what anyone says, partner. That case is mine. But Officer Marshall wasn't in charge of, the, of that investigation. Why does he care so much about it? That day was my last chance. That's why I... Stole the detective's ID and dressed like him. I plan to take out the evidence. Okay, let's press that. Press it all. Why did you disguise yourself as Detective Goodman? If I didn't make it look like Goodman was carrying out the evidence transferal, I'd be arrested for stealing evidence, which wouldn't get me anywhere. So you did it to fool the security camera. And the detective's ID card? I stole that the morning of the incident. So that really was why Goodman started filing out the lost item report. I returned his ID card. I left it on the floor in the pros prosecutor's office parking lot. The ID card found was left there by Officer Marshall. So essentially, you managed to succeed despite your lack of foresight. What do you mean, partner? I mean the fingerprint activated lock, of course. No matter how well you disguise yourself, you can't change your fingerprints. Under normal circumstances, you wouldn't be able to open that locker yourself. But you could because a rubber glove just happened to get stuck in the door. That means Detective Goodman must have opened the locker before Officer Marshall. Oh, I wonder if 7777 whatever is a temporary ID card. A temporary? But then who? Who does that belong to? Probably Goodman. Goodman probably went in there, and that's when he probably died. Hmm, could be. I wasn't expecting Officer Meekins. I knocked him out. Yep. Managed to escape. I knew which errors wouldn't be caught on the camera. Yeah, makes sense how he knows that. There wasn't any murder in the evidence for 515. But then why does everyone keep saying that? I'm pressing it. Press it all. But the blood found the scene certainly indicates a crime took place. What are you, blind? The victim show on that tape is me. I'm not dead yet, partner. So you stole the evidence from the locker. Actually, no, I didn't. Why not? When I opened the locker, the evidence was already gone. What? Mr. Edgeworth, where is the evidence? It's still missing, Your Honor. Detective Goodman's locker was already empty. Someone else stole the evidence. I had a feeling we'd wind up here sooner or later. Everyone involved here is related in some way to that case. I better take another look at the files. Alright. Damn, what do we what do we mean attack? Stole. I say ID? just press everything that you didn't press. Just okay. see if it drags anything out. You pulled a knife on off the weekend and tried to drive him off? Let's just say I was a little surprised. I only planned on, on being in evidence for no more than five minutes. I didn't think anyone would actually come in during that short time. Officer Meekins certainly is a one in a million type of person. Oh. He's mistaken a detective for an intruder and demanding to be shown his ID. That's why he's one in a million, Shane. He's unlucky. Definitely oh. not what you were thinking. <laughs> I'll have to think a little more about his raise this year. When did Edgeworth get so much influence? Anyways, he threw himself at me and I ended up cutting him slightly. Sorry I had to turn out that way. With me knocking him out and everything. By the way, what happened to your knife? Oh, you mean this one? <laughs> I don't know what to say. He uses one knife for everything, Shane. That's how cowboys do it. That's nasty. <laughs> one universal knife is all it takes. And so you knocked off some Meekins out and... Managed to escape. I knew which areas wouldn't be caught with the camera. I might as well keep pushing. Yep. So you did your research beforehand. Those who go into the desert unprepared don't live long, partner. 
I didn't think it would make a difference though. The security tape is erased every six hours. If all are gone planned, no footage would have been left. However, you blooded your coat in the struggle, Officer Meekins. If someone was in the security when I came out, the Jake would have been up. I opened my locker and stashed it in there. What was Officer Meekins doing during that time? What else? He was sleeping like a baby. So what you're saying is, on that day, Officer Marshall, may I ask you one thing? Fire away, partner. It's a free country, after all. Just I think remember. whoever translated this game is treating it like America. <laughs> yeah. Just remember, I'm also free to decide whether or not to answer. Why did you do this? Stealing a detective's ID, injuring a police officer? This is no small offense. Moreover, you're an officer yourself. This will have serious consequences. It can't just be forgiven with a simple cut in salary. Not that salary cuts are even a valid solution. Like I said, this isn't your case. This one is mine. And I'll do anything it takes to get an answer I'm satisfied with. Hmm. The witness has an unusual amount of zeal. Let's hear more. Can't just forget the SO9 incident. You know why? 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 But that case was solved two years ago, wasn't it? That's the reason the evidence was stored in the evidence room. Joe Dark was convicted for his crimes. One thing I can say for sure is that he deserved his sentence. I remember the Joe Dark case. It involved serial murders, didn't it? I don't intend to complain about how it turned out. But there's something that still bothers me. Something went down at that trial. Something no one will ever talk about. What happened? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to find out. Why is he so concerned with that incident? Maybe I should present him with what I think his real reason is. I had a feeling we'd wind up here sooner or later. Everyone involved here is related in some way to that case. I better take another look at the files. Look at the SL9 files. Okay. This is them saying we have to... Read. Read. <laughs> it's closed. Alright. So Dark did it. Serial murder. Sentence to death. Okay. Simple enough. Victims. Oh. 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 Was his brother a victim? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Neil Marshall. Head prosecutor Miles Ashworth. Two witnesses. Okay. Interesting. Investigation. Head investigators. Jake Marshall. So and we can Inc. use. We can use the fact that his brother was a victim, right? Yeah. Jake and Neil. Uh. So should we just prove that? We have to press it. We press these statements already. I stole that. I was in the officer. That. Yep. There was any murder yeah. evidence. Yep. We are, we know that. Can't just forget the S one I said. You know why? And we already pressed that. Uh, pres uh, is this where you would present it then? Yeah. Yeah. Objection! Objection! Officer Marshall, I think I understand. I think I know why you care so much about the SL9 incident. Sounds like you've been sipping too much cactus juice, partner. I have the SL9 incident file here. The name, Marshall, is mentioned in here. In a list of murder victims. Neil Marshall, are you related to this man? Neil Marshall? Yeah, I'm sure you've heard the name. Two years ago. Huh? He received the same lousy prosecutor award you got. What? A prosecutor? 
must be talking about the King of Prosecutor Award. That amazing award that everyone loves to have. Now I remember. Prosecutor Neil Marshall. He handled the SL9 case before I did. That's right. He was killed. And the case fell into your hands. But what's his relation to you? He was my brother. My only chance. He was investigating the murders with da Damon Gant, the then deputy chief of police. The group of detectives I was part of worked under them. We were desperate to prosecute the killer. Joe Dark. My brother found Dark and was killed. Oh, fought Dark, man. Uh. That was the first time Dark left behind any evidence. That was all we needed. Man, taking one for the team. <laughs> like a true cowboy. He was arraigned and incarcerated. The case was finally closed. At least according to the public records. What do you mean? My brother couldn't have been killed by Joe Dark. I knew my brother better than anyone. No one could have beaten him in a fight. And that's it? That's your reason for your insane actions? There's more to my brother's death than what the records say. No matter how much you try to hide it, you can't fool me. Well, at least one thing's for certain. Now we know what happened at the police department on the day of the crime. That was the last day the SL9 incident could be reopened. Not satisfied with his resolution, Officer Marshall planned to steal the evidence. Disguising himself as Detective Goodman, he entered the evidence room. Officer Meekins confronted him, so he rendered him unconscious and fled. Yes, this mystery has finally been cleared up. No murder took place at the police department that day. But there's so much blood. That's just Meekins being an idiot, Shane. Come on. <laughs> he would have bled out. And no one would have cared. <laughs> True. The things that happen by chance never cease to amaze. At exactly the same time as the murder of the prosecutor's office. This fake murder was going on at the police department. Chance? It's gotta be more than just that. So if no one was murdered at the police department on the day of the crime, that means the murder in the prosecutor's office parking lot was the real one. Which in turn means only one person could have committed the crime. Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky. Remember her, guys? Remember how this all started with her? I know we all kind of forgotten her about this point, but we're bringing Isn't her back. Isn't she wearing that white coat in, in that picture? In the picture, yes. Yes, she was, huh. Shane. Right there, she was wearing the, sh the the thing with the jacket. Yes, we still have to. Yeah, we still have to connect the two locations. We still have yeah. to do that. All right. Well, let's keep it going. Objection! Objection. But wait, a, a verdict wasn't reached in yesterday's trial, Objection! which is why we examined the evidence at the police department today. But. There's only one reason the defendant was not convicted yesterday. There yet remain the mystery of the simultaneous murder at the police department. It seems to me, this boy's got the draw on your partner. All the mysteries at the police department have been resolved, no doubt about it. Our sole murder took place at the prosecutor's office. The only suspect is Lana Sky, And the testimony of one Miss Angel Star is completely incontestable. If you have a response, make a single word or less. Ooh. Objection. Yeah, of course it's going to be objection, Shane. You really think there's going to be anything else? <laughs> ah, that's my one word. <laughs> I rest my case. 
It seems this trial has reached its conclusion. There's no room for doubt. Well done, Mr. Wright. Thanks to you, I didn't need to waste my time. Disproven the alleged murder at the police's department. There's no doubt why I proved today is true. The apparent murder on the security cam's tape really was fake. But I didn't realize... That will end up proving Lana guilty. No. Now that the time for the verdict has arrived, this court finds the defendant. That's a two. Wait. Oh. Oh. Your Honor, wait. Emma. The defense has objection. A scientific objection. Right. What? What do you mean, right? Mr. Wright, are you this girl's guardian? Your Honor? Oh, uh, in a sense. Please, Your Honor. All I'm asking for is a minute of your time. Please hear me out. Mr. Edgeworth, please. I don't want to leave any loose ends. Huh? You want a minute? I'll give you three. I was kind of in shock. I mean, finding out the SL9 incident referred to the Do Joe Dark killings? Now she mentions it. The names of both Sky sisters were in that file. That's when I figured it out. I mean, what Officer Marshall was trying to do that day? So I knew his fingerprints had nothing to do with the crime. That left only one thing. The other hand for it. You mean the trace of blood found on Detective Gumshoe's locker? But no fingerprints were found on it, right? No, but I figure if I examined it scientifically, I'd be sure to find a clue. So I ran over there and looked at it again. So Ming, you, you know it's gonna come up. So did you find something? Um, no. Sorry, I guess I'm not much of a scientific investigator after all. Um, is, is that all? Please don't be mad. I'm just a high school student. And I'm just an attorney. But Mr. Wright, those traces of blood are the only clue we have. If we can't find something wrong with them. Please, Mr. Wright, you're a professional. If anyone can save Lana, it's you. A lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. Me? Oh boy. Time's up. Now then, Mr. Wright. With regards to the incident at the police department, does any reasonable doubt remain? Always. Um. It appears the defense is troubled by the other blood mark. Looking at the floor plans, a handprint was discovered around here. Yep. Is there a problem with this? Mr. Wright, I'm sorry I can't be of any more use. But still. If you can't find anything wrong with that blood mark, Lana will be... Please answer my question, Mr. Wright. We don't have all day. Uh, yes, Your Honor. If I might need to concentrate, it's now. What could be wrong with that handprint detective gumshoe's locker? Could there be something I'm missing? Of oh, it's a gonna, jack. Of course we're gonna jack, but what exactly are we looking for, Shane? Cause the big dumb mascot in front of that locker with a handprint on it. Oh, is, that, are we, is it finally time to talk about the mascot? Yeah. Yeah. This handprint left at the crime scene clearly shows a contradiction. The only thing that seems clear is that you're grasping, Mr. Wright. You've been staring pretty intently at those floor plans. Tell me, is there a problem with them? Yes, this is strange. Take a good look at these floor plans. Something is missing. Missing? You mean something hasn't been drawn on there? Yes, something that, when drawn, 
it will completely change the meaning of the blood mark. Let's pray the defense isn't simply trying to buy time. Hell yeah. Well, very well, Mr. Wright. With all this evidence here, there's gotta be something I can use. The question is, which item can prove something is missing in the floor plan? Is it the, time for the big, boy? The big dumb thing that was blocking everything. The boy, right? The boy. The boy. Take that. Take that. What about that piece of plywood? I'm to work hard on that. The blue badger, mascot of the police force. Get it correct. Defender of truth, guardian of proof. Explain something, Mr. Wright. Police look at the floor plans at the crime scene. The blue badger is not here. So? So watch what happens when you put him in. This is where he was dancing at the time of the crime. Ba-bam! Well? Well? What? Uh, that's right. So long as the blue badger is dancing here with his nightmare dance, it would be impossible music. to place a handprint at this spot the locker. What? So that means, um, just exactly what does that mean? It means it can't be done. What are you saying? Blood traces were undeniably found on that locker. Don't look at me. I didn't put it there. Mr. Wright, think it through scientifically. Emma, on that afternoon, Officer Meekins was the one who brought the blue badger to the evidence room, right? After you put it down, it would be impossible to leave a handprint on that locker. So, that must mean this blood mark is old was left there before the blue badger was even brought in? Just one moment, I would not allow such far-fetched balderdayish in my courtroom. It may sound far-fetched, your honor, but it's the only possible explanation. On February 21st, in the police department's evidence room, blood was spilled not once, but twice! But, but how? One time was captured on this tape, taken by the security camera. Officer Meekins cut his hand from which a trivial amount of blood fell. The problem is, the other time... Oh, the head is blocking that locker the whole time. Yeah. Someone bled prior to the struggle shown on this tape. It had to have been... It had to have been... Goodman. Detective Goodman when he was really murdered! That's ridiculous! I refuse to accept your absurd claim! Let's go, hype time! The murder portrayed in the security tape been proven to be a fake! However, does not explain the blood mark found on the locker! So then, assuming this murder you purport really happened, when did it take place? I demand show evidence that proves when it occurred. Or 20. When did the first incident occur? To summarize, the defense claims that prior to Officer Meekins being cut by Jake Marshall, who was posing a detective goodman, another incident took place at the evidence room. That's right, the blood mark on the locker proves this. Very well, then tell us. When did this first incident occur? As Mr. Edgeworth said, proof must be presented. Proof that shows when the murder took place. It's the autopsy, right? Is there uh, any piece of evidence that can show that? That's an hour and a half. Otherwise, we have the ID card that shows times. Shows when the first crime took place. 420. So 420. How did you get 420? Because of the missing time or the missing ID time. The 77777. Oh. This one? Yeah. So we printed on this, right? Yeah. Take that. Uh oh. If the crime took place inside <laughs> no, the evidence room, then the killer would have <laughs> to enter it. 
And in order to do so, an ID card would have been required. An ID card? Oh, the ID card record. You're right, Shane. Don't be scared. <laughs> I'm always scared, Nig. <laughs> Officer Meekins brought the blue pa badger panel into the room at... Let's see here. 4.50 p.m. If the crime took place before that time, then it would be... 4.40 p.m. Ah, so it was Edgeworth. <laughs> Again. Again. Damn, Edgeworth, you're trying to murder all these people. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Miles Edgeworth, just what have you done? Again! <laughs> Again? I never would have figured you had the nerve, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone turns on him. Drop the act, witness. It doesn't take a lot of thought to figure out it couldn't have been me. Hmm, nope, I ain't getting it. Hmm, I'm afraid I don't understand either. Clear from the Lumino test, the, that blow was there. However, when the second crime took place, both Officer Meekins and Officer Marshall failed to notice the blood. That means the blood from the first crime was wiped away by the real murderer. I would have had just 10 minutes to murder the victim, carry his body away, and clean up the blood. Unfortunately, that's physically impossible. That would mean the crime must have taken place before Mr. Ashworth entered the evidence room. Look at the char again. But somebody had 20 minutes to do this. There's only one other card number remaining. Seven digit sevens. Talk about a lucky number. Damn, that's not your number, Marshall? Unfortunate. Oh, wait. That's probably one he wanted. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. How could Detective Goodman have entered the evidence room? Since there's no record of his card being used beforehand, he must have entered along with the real murderer. That's the only plausible explanation. He went in with seven, 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 seven. Yeah. Mr. Edgeworth, please look into his ASAP. Find out whose ID number is seven, 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 seven. That's one seven too many, Your Honor. Wow. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> I'm unable to look up the owner of that ID card. At least, at present. What? Explain yourself, son. The ID number 777777 belongs to someone with a rank of captain or higher. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Someone who is so-called executive officer. We don't have the authority to inquire such into such a person's identity. But that's ridiculous. Just how? I'm not finished talking, Mr. Wright. There is one situation in which we can be granted such authority. If an official charge filed against an executive is accepted. An official charge? You're all alike, aren't you? With your cover-ups and your forgeries. That's how the prosecutor office operates. I take pride in my work, Officer Marshall. I would appreciate it if you would keep your slander to yourself. Slander, is it? Okay. Let me ask a question. Yeah? No, not to you. To her, the defendant sitting over there. Your own little executive. Alana? Don't be stupid. She's been charged with murder. Of course we've looked up her ID number, and it's not seven sevens. Don't play me for a fool, partner. That's not what I wanted to ask. All I want to know is one thing about that incident. The SL9 incident? Answer me this, Chief Prosecutor. In that trial two years ago, did you really only use legitimate evidence? Uh -huh. Who? Do you need the witness to repeat his question, Chief Prosecutor? I heard him fine, Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago, I was in charge of the prosecution for that trial. At the time, we occasionally, we felt the powerlessness of the law. At least, I did. Lana, 
I became a prosecutor in order to suppress crime with the law. But before I realized it, we were the ones being suppressed by the law. Defendant, just what are you saying? I'll ask you again, Chief Prosecutor. During that trial two years ago, did you really present all the evidence in court? Can you look me an investigator in that crime in the eye and say that you did? Chief Prosecutor, you didn't. I don't have to, Officer Marshall. Hmm? Well, why won't you answer him? Drastic crimes require drastic measures. Oh. That's just the way it is. We did what we had to in order to get him to get the verdict he deserved. Well, Anna. Even if it involved forging evidence. See? That's what I'm talking about. No. No! Order, 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 order! It's a conspiracy! Lana's remark caused quite a stir. The chaos in the courtroom could not be quelled. The conclusion to a trial would have to wait until the following day. Woo! Uh, Woo! He was you. presented as a witness to that too, right? Who? Uh, Lana and her sister. They were witnesses, right? Yes, to the crime the, of the serial killer, yes. Oh no, it's no, going... definitely a vendetta. Yeah. Wow, that was very spicy. Ooh. 